Sir, do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, speeding? No, it's because your intro sucks. Uh, Please step out onto the curbside. Hey everybody, welcome to another week of the Curbside Podcast, podcast. the podcast where we talk what? about cars and everything to do with cars. My name is Jeffrey, I drive a 2004 Honda S2000, and I am your Taiwanese-American Southern Californian. What's up everybody, my name is Park, I'm from Northern California, I drive a 2016 Mike 3. So yeah man, that's where we're at. Jeff. A mic three. Mic three, bro. What? All good. What's Somebody will figure three? it out, dude. Magic mic three? Yeah, yeah, there you go. That You got it, Jeff. You got it, freaking kid. Oh, okay, cool, 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 uh, cool, cool. What's up, Park? Well, you know, Jeff, so you know our conversation last week about, like, Tesla and its autopilot stuff, you know? It just, it just kind of got me thinking. Uh, and I had this, con- I actually had this conversation with uh, one of my best friends. And it really is having the thing. I'm like, dude, we should, like, talk about this. So... We've been focusing, and let's be honest, we talked a lot of shit about Tesla, but kind of want to build off of that or kind of, you know, branch from that and just talk about what do you think about automation in general? Like, what do you think about the future of self-driving cars? And what do you think needs to change? What do you think will happen? And like, just what do you think the future is? My friend and I, two days ago, we also had the same conversation. He's a Tesla fan. And I was kind of mentioning about our podcast. Now we're talking a bit of crap about them but that led off into a discussion about basically what you were talking about self-driving cars and automation and sort of the plausibility of it and kind of everything that you know all the sort of complications that i'm sure that we're gonna have to go through but first of all let's get this straight if we could get self-driving cars to work perfectly all the time and just be out there without any anyone driving on the road they would work fantastically you know yeah a lot less deaths and a lot less accidents if they work perfectly and and not just that but like you can take tasks such as delivery trucks long yeah. haul trucks and you can yeah. give this job to automated you know vehicles and they can take care of it and they can do it with more efficiency they can do it you know cleanly because most of the time it might be ev but at the same time that argument you know it's like i I read an article actually recently this week and it was talking about how automation in vehicles if we start automating everything we start automating you know taxis and we automate trucks and we automate the logistics and shipping industry you know um, amazon's trying to get into the self-driving self-delivery thing they have that sidewalk robot thing jeff i think you talked about it do you know i I don't know if you talked about it but i I was watching i think i was watching something and they have this automated robot that like goes on the sidewalks and it's programmed to stop at certain houses and you get a notification that hey your delivery is outside you walk outside of the robot open the thing and grab your package and boom (laughs) there you go so but the problem is like what this article also stated was how many billions and billions of dollar dollars we're gonna lose because we're we're taking these jobs away from people? So this is this another aspect of automation we have to consider that you know the future always seems nice and shi- uh, bright and shiny, but what happens to the everyday working person? What happens to the guy who's doing the long haul trucking from Los Angeles to Toronto, you know, and his job gets replaced by an automated truck? And this is gonna happen not just in the trucking industry, but also logistics industry. It could happen to the, the commuting industry in terms of like taxis and, you know, Ubers, like Uber all of a sudden, you know, forget hiring drivers, we'll just start making self-driving cars. All these like things will have a reduction in jobs and money. And you have mm-hmm. to think about how does that, how's that going to impact our economy? It's true. I mean, there's a lot of questions that we have about a lot of things would, you know, have to be put up for debate as in like, who gets the speeding ticket or (laughs) who has to pay the insurance or whatnot. But I think the biggest question right now for me is, is it even possible for us to transition to complete self-driving? You know, I'm going to answer you that question with an absolute. I think it is. And it will happen because technology 
will always outperform human uh, capability. So yeah. we'll be able to develop these self-driving cars. We'll be able to develop them and have them work. And, you know, as you said, have them work, quote unquote, perfectly. But the issue, Jeff, and I, we talked about this a bit last week, but I think this is a better time to talk about it now, is now how do you take this technology, this complicated technology, and how do you give it to the everyday Joe? And how do you get him to understand the technology that they're using, to be aware of the technology that they're using, to not take automation for granted and be completely aware. Not just like, yeah, 35,000. I don't even know how much Model 3s are. You can get it for like 35, right? So like $35,000, I got a Model 3, boom, I got autopilot. I can use this thing anywhere that I can use it. Like we said last week, the guy has to have no knowledge about, you know, limitations of the system. He has to have no knowledge about automation in general, automation dependency. I sent you a video, Jeff. Yes, that was actually a really interesting video because it, puts in a factor that I feel like not a lot of people think about when it, we're talking about self-driving cars. It's because like a lot of the time when we're talking self-driving cars, it's a sort of, how do you say it? It's 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 an ideal situation. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. And as it should be, because if it works perfectly, it would be a nice situation. But that's the thing. If it works perfectly, yeah, we're still a long while away from that. Okay? Oh, yeah. And it just seems like as we... As we're seeing now, it's going to be a long, dirty road to get there. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the video that me and Jeff are referring to, I sent him this video. And as I told you guys before, I'm a pilot. And for me, when we look at automation in cars, what comes to mind? And which is honestly, if we be honest, the only other industry that relies on automation this much and kind of what cars in the automobile industry is getting its ideas and inspiration from is aviation. Aviation has auto has had autopilot for decades now. And the funny part is it has not been perfected even in that industry. It has been reduced like the amount of errors caused by automation has been reduced, but it's still not perfect. And they've had decades of, you know, head start compared to the automotive industry. But that video that we're me and Jeff specifically talking about, if you guys have the time, it's called Children of the Magenta Line. And you can find it on, uh, what did I send you on? Vimeo? Yeah, I think it's Vimeo. So you, you can you can check it out on that. And it's a little technical. It talks, you know, it's oriented towards the professional you know, pilot. But it's mm -hmm. basically a guy who was hired by American Airlines for a training course for training retraining of a bunch of their pilots. And he talked about how trust in automation and the levels of automation that should be used. And and the thing is, that video was made, Jeff, and you, I told you this, that was made like in the early 90s. That's almost yeah. freaking, what is it? I can't oh, if do you math. Watch it, you, if you watch it, you'll realize, yeah, this looks like it's made yeah. in the early 90s. Yeah, like you'll tell, this, yeah, this thing was old as shit. But you watch that <laughs> and you, you're like, damn, dude, this guy was talking about this in the 90s? And now we're coming up on 2020. And in aviation, we're still dealing with the problems that he talked about in that video in aviation yeah and this is mm. is when i'm what like almost 20 30 years now so we're still dealing with those problems but the thing is now we're getting into a whole new realm of self-driving cars now what mm -hmm. i think makes that different jeff than like aviation in aviation yeah. you have to be highly trained you do a lot of school yeah. you do a lot of training you learn about automation and not just you know the specifics of the auto like autopilot in your plane but also theory of automation how much trust to put into automation automation dependency yeah. these are all things that have been taught to a pilot but who's teaching this to the regular person exactly then that was the that was the factor that i was talking about that not a lot of people put into it it's that it's that will we ever be able to get rid of a driver permanently because there needs to be someone there that knows what to do when something goes wrong. Yeah. Basically what the video was talking about. He was referring to how there are three levels of autonomy. Yes. Level one, nothing. Level two, you dial in like your flight path or if correct me if I'm wrong, like where you want to be, your high elevation and whatnot. Yeah, just the basic, you know, axes like up, yeah. down, left, right. And the plane will do it itself. Yes. And then there's the third portion of it where it's you tell a program where you want to go in like a computer and whatnot and that will tell the plane all its up downs left rights and whatnot for the whole flight so let's take for example if i take off from la i can program the plane to fly a certain departure route to fly a certain in route portion and to fly a certain arrival and approach route and it can fly it all by itself without 
me having to touch anything. Yeah. And he was talking about how <laughs> because people were being trained at the third level. He was flying with someone and I believe air traffic control told him to like take a different direction or something like that. And his first instinct, because he was a older and more experienced pilot was I'll reach for the controls and fly the plane myself. Makes sense. Correct. (laughs) Yes. Because it is a sudden maneuver and I have the training and intuition to do this. Meanwhile, his co-pilot, he tells his co-pilot this and straight away, he starts typing into the computer, and he's like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. We ain't got time for this. I don't have time for you to bust out your QWERTY and be like, tick, 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 and be like, all right, here we go. We're yeah. going to go that way. No, I need the plane to go there now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like the classic example from that video. And that video, literally, what makes that video is that example that he gives. But th- th- this kind of leads us to like a different problem with automation, which is, like you said, these guys have been trained at the third level because when this video came out when that stuff was happening airlines were telling pilots hey you as a pilot will make mistakes computer will not make mistakes so we're going to train you to basically that you know how to fly this computer not how to fly this airplane anybody can fly an airplane but we're going to train you how to fly this computer that's why this video came out and he was trying to transition airlines and teaching him like teach a holistic approach teach them when to fly the airplane and when to fly the autopilot. Now, slowly, and this still hasn't like happened fully in the industry, slowly pilots are transitioning to a role of, okay, fly the airplane. If something happens, fly the airplane. If something unexpected happens, fly the airplane. Somebody tells me to do something different, fly the airplane first. Now it's slowly starting to take shape, but the thing is, the regular automotive industry, and again, when you, when you take things that are on a small sample, very focused group, you know, in this situation, it's aviation and pilots. Now we have to apply this to a bigger group of people who haven't even gone through the first problem that we're talking about, who was, he was talking about the video, which is over-reliance of automation. But right now, we have no idea what we're doing in terms of, with cars and automation. Yeah, because it's not going to be 100% all the time. Eventually, I'm sure we're going to get very close to that. Yeah. But what happens, okay, when that very small percentage of something goes wrong and we need a human to step in and like you were saying, they're overly dependent on the automation. I'm like, oh, okay, now what? I forgot you how to fly an airplane. Off a cliff or Aren't you a pilot? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in this case, it would be like, I never knew how to drive. What does this big circle thing yeah, do? Yeah, exactly. Like, eventually, we're going to start having freaking DMV tests where you use the autopilot system. You're like, hey, congratulations. You can control the autopilot. You can drive the car. Here you go. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just, I was talking about how to my friend, like, yes, autopilot's going to be a big thing, but should we never have a driver? Or someone, someone paying attention. No. Right? You know why? And this was actually, this is something I read. So again, going back to aviation, because Jeff, literally the only place we, I keep going back to aviation. And do you, like, <laughs> Stop do, it, Parth, it's annoying. Dude, but you know do We're you know talking why? about cars. Yeah, but do you know why? It's like, it's, this is the most relatable field. This is a field that's kind of like, yeah, I've been there, done that, you know, kind of like thing. Yeah. So if, if we're going to be trying to implement these technologies into our cars, we should look at the industry that also has done the research and has been through the phases of over-reliance. Now, going back to the roots of flying and, you know, all, all that ups and downs. There, there was a study done where autopilot systems and aircraft these days, they're so advanced. And, you know, people say like, oh, yeah, in like 50 years from now, the, the pilot's going to be completely useless and we're not going to need pilots anymore. There was a survey done. And the survey was, would you step aboard an aircraft where you know that nobody's in, cr- no human being is in control of the aircraft at the front of the plane and that you're relying on a series of automation and computers. And it was an overwhelming no that people would not step on the plane because they don't have that trust in computers and automation. And I don't think we will ever have that trust, Jeff. Because, like, naturally, like, freaking biology, Jeff, we trust other humans. And we trust them more than a thing. That's just how we are. I don't ever see human being completely replaced in an automated system maybe his task can be reduced to like you know they call as they call pilots these days you know cockpit managers but as far as removing a human from either airplanes or cars or trucks or whatever 
I don't see it happening just because the general public's going to be like, yo, bro, that's kind of sketch, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> honestly. Because, I mean, like, at the same time also, I think we trust humans more because is because we know that humans have the natural intuition to want to do everything they can to survive. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then that kind of drive to not die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's what drives, like, certain problem-solving things or certain actions in, in a tough situation. Yes. Or in a stressful situation. Yeah. Meanwhile, a computer is like, A does not equal B, so B does not equal C, so die. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, that, that's the only <laughs> option left now. <laughs> yeah. So I can't do anything anymore. <laughs> and then also, we also have... The, the intuition of how other people think. Yes. As we saw with the smart summon, the video of the Acura coming in and almost hitting the, the Tesla yeah. was because the, the Acura was turning into the plaza. And had another human being been in the Tesla, they probably would have looked across the street, right? Yes. Saw the person waiting at that part of the street and be like, oh, I know that he's going to turn in, so I'm going to you know, hold off on going. The predictability, yeah. But the Tesla, all it's doing, it's like, no car in front of me. Okay, yeah. it won't crash. It's, 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 okay. it's, it's functioning within its program parameters. And if it's something outside that parameter, well, then <laughs> shit out of luck, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm sure, like, a lot of the parameters will be able to eventually take care of and code within, you know, computers and whatnot, but there's still always going to be... It's infinite. Yeah, it, exactly. It, it is infinite. Like, they're, like this, then you get into, like, freaking, like, the freaking Einstein-level physics and shit, like, I, which I have zero idea about, but, like, <laughs> like literally, in any situation, the, the, the results and whatever happens is infinite, you know? And the thing is, our human minds, like you said, we are better able to predict these things because we know how other humans think. So our predictability yeah. is better because we're not we're not functioning on a system of parameters and input output. That's why I you know people say oh the one day you get artificial intelligence that's like freaking that dude from my robot you know that robot dude oh yeah 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 it was sunny yeah. or something yeah and then you know they say like robots you know robots can't have dreams or some shit like that or whatever and then apparently he has dreams. Dude, we're not getting there, dude. Like, <laughs> that, that that's some, like, Hollywood shit. Oh, I hope we don't get there, dude. No, dude, we can't get there. And then it's going to be, like, Terminator freaking 3 where, you know, the Skynet's going to be like, yeah, you know the problem with humans is that humans are the problem, so, like, eradicate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, that, that, I hope we don't ever, I hope we we'll never get yeah, there. Yeah, th we're, we're getting some, like, next level theory of artificial intelligence. But, like, <laughs> yeah. the basic principle is humans don't principle on parameters. Machines pr and automation functions on parameters and there's way too many program like parameters to possibly fit into you know an autonomous shit yeah like taking it back to cars we talked about you know keith who the hell's keith remember the guy from top gear where he's like i could fix this myself i guess then, oh yeah that guy okay <laughs> <laughs> and then the car's going the wrong way yeah or the people who decide i'm gonna jailbreak my car yeah or the people who are like just like okay you know what middle of the street today i'm just gonna jump out of my car or i'm just gonna walk straight into the road like so, these are things that are unpredictable yeah they're unpredictable and with that with that being established like what we what we think about automation and like we need some philosophical shit in this episode, but... Um, to be honest, yeah. Like, it could go on forever and ever. Yeah. But, like, let, let's think about the future. It's going to happen. But my question to you is, what do you think should be required or what should be regulated in order for somebody to use an autopilot system in everyday life on public roads where other people may be using autopilot and where other people may not be using autopilot? Because people like me, I don't think, Jeff, I, I'm going to be adapting to the autopilot life... Uh, anywhere anytime soon you know so what do you think needs to be done i think at the very least that there should be always someone on board well trained to pay attention to the road and who knows what they're gonna do when something goes wrong so let's say you have a household that wants to get somewhere a household yeah let's say you have a household a family of oh, people. family okay okay <laughs> How's the entire house is going dude where are we going <laughs> the rv automated winnebago jeff <laughs> like if you have a family that wants to own a car right yeah i believe someone in that family should have to go through a licensing exam and not the garbage licensing exam we have right now something more stringent something more in-depth yes that teaches you how to drive a car what to do in an emergency and 
when to look for signs of the autopilot going haywire. And if not, then I'm sure there's going to be companies that around that are just going to be sending around self-driving cars and whatnot. And maybe they could have a pilot on it. I don't know. So, but it's how do you think that, of... that regulation... The thing is, I, 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 I'm, I have two concerns. If you put, like, the responsibility of training on private companies... You make, you know, Chevy do it. You make Tesla do it. You make BMW do it. You make Mercedes do it. They're going to come out with an exam or a training in which it'll be easy, quote unquote, to pass because they're trying to sell the car. So I don't know if I really trust the manufacturer. But, you know, but see, now you're going to say, well, let's get the government in on this. And you know? that's always a problem. <laughs> Look at the DMV right now. <laughs> you think these shitters are responsible or, you know, give a proper driving exam in terms of automation or like a training course in automation and autopilot? I don't think so. I, I, I don't trust I don't trust the manufacturer because they're always looking for money. So they'll make that shit easy to pass so you can buy the damn car. I don't trust the government because they're incompetent as shit. So who the <laughs> hell? Conspiracy. <laughs> I mean, it's not a conspiracy. They're incompetent as shit. Like you can't drive anywhere with these goddamn potholes. <laughs> goddamn piece of It's not conspiracy, Jeff. It's a f- truth. Government is inept and incapable. Because everyone's out vacationing in Hawaii. We talked about this shit, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, and, got it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, who the hell should do it? I don't know, man. There's too many variables in this. I just said, screw the autopilot. That... Drive the damn car, motherfuckers. Oh, wait, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But, but, okay, let's just... Instead of all this philosophy stuff, okay? Yeah. Here's what I am not going to like about self-driving cars. Yeah. Okay. Simple as this. I'm not going to be able to drive. If we want this to work 100% very well, we are not going to... I get what you're saying. Everything has to be automated so that the automated systems can predict the other automated systems. (laughs) Exactly. Because then if you put a human variable into it, there's an unknown always. Exactly. And I mean, heck, if we... We have automated anything, everything. We won't need traffic lights. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they could just, they could probably weave each other. They don't legit like be like a robot. Each, like if that ever happens though, you lose that feeling of being able to drive. I don't know. I feel like being able to drive gives you a sense of freedom. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially here in the States. If you don't have a car, you can't get anywhere. I mean, not just freedom. As car guys, we like cars and we like driving yeah. cars and having fun. Exactly. Like, because so, what I'm saying is like, we don't have the freedom to do that anymore. What am I going to tell a self-driving car, okay, if I just want to go out for a drive? Like, do I, do I set destination A as my house and destination B as my house? The car's <laughs> going to be like, well, we're here. <laughs> like, like yeah. what do you want us to do? And, and I'll never be able to, like, go off on a path, stop by the road, or, like, go on, like, some view place yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if the car's going to be like, that's not logical. No, 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 no we can't stop here. here. We cannot stop yeah. here. It's not programmed. We're not programmed to yeah. stop here. But you know what scares exactly. me the most, Jeff? What? You remember the scene in iRobot where Will Smith's driving through that tunnel, and then, like, yeah. a truck full of these, like, robots, like, come out and they try to kill him, basically? Yeah. And then one of them, like, grabs his windshield and rips it off. And then he goes, you are experiencing a car accident. And I'll, <laughs> <laughs> when I watched that shit, I was like, god damn, yeah, he is. <laughs> you are right. He is experiencing a car accident. <laughs> no, about, These motherfucking robots got to come and do that shit to me. And I'm going to poop my pants, bro. <laughs> and I ain't no Will Smith, man. I'm not going to live through that shit. <laughs> My favorite line in that um, movie is like, what are you doing? Driving. You're crazy. You're crazy. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to get to that point. When we talk about self-driving cars, that's the point we want to reach. But I don't know. I don't. I like driving. I like going places because. Because. Just. Just because. because. Yeah. Like, I don't. Sometimes I don't get from A to B. Sometimes I get from A to A with a big loop in the middle. Dude, no, for (laughs) real. Actually, that, that was today. Like. Uh, we've been having construction done in our house. You you, uh, you know about that. And yeah. uh, there's a lot of work being happening, and they've been, like, putting their construction shit in front of the garage, so I can't take the M3 out. So I haven't driven the M3 in, like, two and a half weeks, maybe three at this point. And today I was going to the gym, and I saw that the driveway was clear. So I literally went to the gym, pulled the M3 out, and drove to the gym with the M3, but I literally took the longest route possible to get to the gym. <laughs> Just so I could drive my damn car because I hadn't driven it in like almost three weeks. 
And exactly. Like, what are you going to tell the computer? Uh, uh, I'll just plot a bunch of points. <laughs> yeah, beep, exactly. beep, beep, beep. <laughs> the car's going to send you a message. This is an inefficient route. We're like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> they should have that as a button in the self driving. Like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, just be like, this is inefficient. Beep. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> Agree? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about we go to our sponsored break so we could talk about some news. Hi. All right, everyone, welcome again to another episode of The Sponsored Break. Uh, what? Another episode, episode of The Sponsored Break? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This oh. is episode, what, seven or eight of The Sponsored Break? I, I don't know. <laughs> and today we present you with our sponsor. Our sponsor, oh, sponsor is Sapien. Sapien, thank you again for the sponsor. Sapien, what is it? A blockchain-based social network that rewards users for high-quality content with cryptocurrency. And if you're interested, you want to sign up today, go to www.sapien.network. And you can start earning today, Jeff. Start earning. Yes. Start money. earning today. I like money. You like free money? Free money is always nice. Free money is fantastic. Sapien can hook you up with it, though. Just got to post some good stuff. Uh, the Curbside Podcast is on there. So if you do join, go give us a follow because that would be fun. And as always, our show is sponsored by ourselves. And you can check us out at thecurbsidepodcast.com where you could, you know, read our blog, listen to us, and, you know, do all sorts of fun stuff. Actually, there's not a lot of fun stuff, but it's a website, so check it out. And if you want to support our show, please email us at thecurbsidepodcast at gmail.com, because that would be really nice if we could, you know, keep the lights on here. Keep the lights on, yeah, yeah. exactly. We out here, no yeah. electricity. California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get back to the show. All right, back to the show back for to the some show again. Uh-oh. News. All right, part first yeah. thing I want to talk about in news is uh-huh. reviews of the 2020 Corvette are coming out. Ooh. Yep. And it's they fantastic. are overall, yeah, yeah right, overall mean, very positive. <laughs> I mean, like, saw that coming a mile away, but it's the price, man. It's it's the price, and it's I mean, it's capabilities for its price. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Which is the thing, okay? So I want to talk about this because I was looking at the Corvette and its price and its specs, and I'm like, for this money, you can buy a Cayman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta be slow okay. in the head to do that shit, <laughs> right? You can buy a Cayman, which has, I think, a flat four. Does it now? Oh, the new seven one eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's turbo. Yeah, it has a, a turbo flat. It's a turbo flat four. Yeah, that makes three hundred horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you and, buy that? And, and the not the new I'm, I'm pretty sure you can spec a Cayman <laughs> to be a lot more expensive than a Corvette. Oh, the Corvette. yeah. The the Corvette, the top of the line, tops out at eighty something. Which is still a right fantastic now. price. Exactly. And, you know, this car is, I think, I think performance-wise, it's almost, it's pretty much up there with the 911. Bro, but here's the thing. You know what's going to really just, like, shatter is when they come out with that Z06. Oh, yeah. Because you know it's going to be, like, around 100,000. They'll probably try to keep it right below it, you know? They'll probably do, like, 99,000, whatever. But I bet you that shit will have a performance of the new freaking F8 ferrari tributo or like even better that thing will have very very high-end supercar level performance like mclaren 720s level shit yeah right now porsche is like pooping their pants when that happens ferrari is gonna be like (laughs) we need to make a new car (laughs) ferrari the thing with ferrari is they're not bothered because people always buy ferrari yeah, I mean, you know? which is also true, okay? Which is also like, true with Porsche, Porsche yes, too. I agree. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just... Yeah, it's the flex. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you flex. have a Corvette, cost fifty nine 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 five. that could hold, you know, that could be up there with the cheapest 911, which starts at a whopping $124,000? Dude, 911's absurd, dude. <laughs> It's literally half the price. To be honest, like in, 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 in terms of like Porsche and 911s, 
the 911 that makes the most sense to buy in terms of like performance and money actually is a GT3 amazingly yeah because you you get honestly. unbelievable performance and <laughs> you, you can actually get that cheaper than some 911s that are spec basic like yeah, 4 s's exactly yeah, yeah. I like mean, you can spec it at 4s easily to 800, 180,000 and you can pick up a GT3 for like about 130 140 the 911 I, it, yes it has the german engineering and the german interior but the corvette you know the interior is not far like it's not terrible right now it actually looks pretty nice the corvette yeah yeah and i'm sure it might fall apart faster than the porsche yeah but, but then you porsche can buy another to... one and you still spend less it, than it, the porsche <laughs> That that Porsche has to drive amazingly well. Yeah, but far then you, out like then you get into the whole of this like, universe well. thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. Like there, that, there are people I mean, that just won't do it because brand. Like I don't want to drive. Yeah, a Chevy. but imagine you in a Porsche pulling up to a Chevy Corvette, and you're like, <laughs> I'm gonna get roasted. <laughs> let's let's be honest. With most of the people buying these Porsches that are worth this much money, they don't really have an idea of what they're sitting in, like. They, they're just kind of status symbol. Yeah. True, true, true. Very true. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it sells. I'm excited to see it on the road. Speaking of Chevy, though, I have another, uh, I have another piece of Chevy news uh-huh. that I thought was interesting. Chevy will now give current Mustang owners an extra $3,000 if they sh- shift over to the Camaro. Why? <laughs> what? <'Cause> what? <laughs> As you can see, clearly, Camaro business is going super well. Oh, is it? <laughs> is that yes. what they say? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh. We're selling tons. Mm. So please buy one. Okay. All and, right. <laughs> yep. And, it, it's, it, and they say it's possibly going to be discontinued for 20, after 2020. The Camaro? Yes. Bro, they're going to have like a brand rebirth like 20 years from now, be like, introducing the new Camaro. And I was like, bro, you did that shit 20 years ago. What are you trying to do now? American cars love to do that shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's what they did with the Mustang, the yeah. Challenger, the Camaro. All of which looked fantastic when they first came out. But I feel like they just end up going down the same cycle again. Yeah, they get lazy, I feel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you remember the Mustang before, before like, the current kind of, like, retro design language Dude, came out? The the late 90s and the early 2000s was not a good time for American cars in general. No matter <laughs> right. if it was a Camaro, a Corvette, or even freaking, you know, yeah. Mustang. Like, it was just not a good time. <laughs> yeah, because you, you look at them and they're like, like, they start out with a 60s, 50s Mustang and they're like, good look yeah and they're like let's redesign it let's make it more modern let's make smooth it out a bit and it ends up looking like some big blob of a sports car yeah. and you're like cool and generic like, sports car and like you look at them now and you're like damn that looks old yeah <laughs> like it looks older than the classic ones you know what i'm saying the classics ones still look like damn that's beautiful and the, the ones from like 2000s i don't give a shit if it's like a cobra or whatever you're like hmm <laughs> Somebody bought that. Yeah. But do you remember when like they re- they all of the companies decided to like let's go back to the retro styling? Yeah, like after 2010. Oh my gosh, the Camaro when it came out, I had no idea Bumblebee. what car it was. That's what started the whole thing. No, I, I had even a poster from the LA Auto Show that I got. Yeah, I didn't know what car this was supposed to be. I don't. I didn't know like what brand it was really, except for I guess. It said Chevrolet, but I didn't read. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but I just saw it. I'm like, this looks amazing. Dude, yeah. Like, when I, uh, the first time I saw it was in the Transformers movie. And I was like, what? That's a Camaro? And I'm like, no way, dude. And then, like, a few, like a year or so later, they came out with a car. I mean, that one was, I think, the concept. But they came out with a car that looked almost exactly like it. I'm like, bruh, what? Is it time to get a Chevy? <laughs> like, that, they realized after 2010 that, okay we're fucking up so let's go back to the cool looking you know muscle car america and they did that and the last 10 years have been fantastic honestly i think for american cars like to the point with jeff you don't know this before i got the m3 i wanted to get a camaro the zl1 oh yeah remember that yeah i was in love with that shit. which was i was like that's out of character for you but okay i was like that's a fantastic car i wanted a camaro zl1 but and I was like, M3. So, <laughs> but... Um, I feel like they're falling back into the same trap of the... The same cycle of, like, as they're updating it, 
is getting the muscle cars are getting more and more like vanilla ish. Yeah, and then Corvette comes so, out with a mid engine. They're like, <laughs> I shit it on all you shitters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a strong feeling that eventually no one's gonna buy them, and then they're gonna stop selling them. Wait, the and Corvette then again, another. Not not Corvette, oh. the muscle cars. Oh, okay. And yeah, then in yeah. twenty years they're gonna be like retro design, and like everyone's gonna be like, I want them again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Some other news. Quick news. Quick news. Jeff. Rapid uh-huh. fire news. Uh, take cool, in, cool. real quick. Yes. Uh, you, we know that they're coming out with a the <laughs> turbo and a turbo S or whatever the shit that yes. means in Porsche terminology. Um, expensive as hell. We talked about that. Um, but they're adding a cheaper 4S variant. To the group, and it can it'll, it'll start at fifty thousand dollars less. Okay, obviously Fantastic. you get less performance, less range, and all that other shit. Um, yeah, a hundred thousand dollars, I could afford that. Yeah. Yes. One hundred and five, mm-hmm. actually. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Great. So they are coming great. out with a <laughs> cheaper take in. That's that. Real quick, other news. I wanna. I want BMW to break. I want the M brand to break away from BMW. Yes. That needs to happen. Freaking bullshit happened, dude. <laughs> What happened? <laughs> they released a two series Grand Coupe. Uh huh. What the what fuck? What kind of what kind of drivetrain does it have, Parth? Freaking front wheel drive. Yes, this is. Uh, <laughs> you know, BMW. What are you doing? You know, you know, you know. I talked about this like to somebody a few years ago, like not even a few months, few years ago. I'm like, as soon as the two series came, I'm like, watch, like a few years from now, they're gonna come out with a fucking four door version of the two series and call that the shit, the Grand Coupe, and they're gonna sell that shit more expensive than the two door version of the car, and then look what happened, and they made it front wheel drive just to piss me off more, and it has freaking M caliper brakes. Suck yourself. That's <laughs> not an M driving machine, sure. Piece of sure. shit. What is this blue neon light? You see the photo of this shit on the inside? Got this like weird disco blue lighting. Looks like freaking vomit. <laughs> the shit is this car, dude? RGB, dude. That's not RGB. That's just B, dude. I only see B. <laughs> There's not even RG in there. God damn. Starts at thirty thousand dollars, and you can get the M two thirty five i Grand Coupe. That's a wow. Mouthful. Oh, heck no. If you guys haven't seen this thing, um, it is on our Instagram page. Go give us a follow at the Curbside Podcast. It's it's a travesty, honestly. <laughs> you know what? You, you know the shit that's going to like really get me over the edge, Jeff? I bet what? you they're going to come out with the M2 version of this. Oh, my the gosh. The M2 Grand Coupe. No. They will. No, it's not even the same car as the M2. <laughs> it's, it's literally the, it's a one the, series that they slapped a two on. Is the M6 Grand Coupe the same as the M6 Coupe? No, but do they give a shit? Oh no. Oh my gosh. No, at least those ride on the same platform, okay? Yeah. This car, they literally got the, 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 the one series platform, which is the mini platform, and was like, let's make the back slopey and be like, okay, here you go. A two series Grand Coupe. And I'm pretty sure this one costs more than the actual M2. I mean, not M2. Uh... Fucking two series. It just has to, just right? because of design elements. Yeah, it's an ugly design element is what it is. You know what's <sighs> funny? When what? my dad was buying his 335, we did your delivery back in 2013. We went and talked to a guy at Stevens Creek BMW. The old guy, he's been around for a while. He's one of the salespeople there, kind of a veteran. He said in the next, and this was 2013, he said, in the next 10 years, BMW plans to release a whole line of cars completely changing their you know, buyer landscape in order to infiltrate every single market possible. And you will have so much selection of BMW cars that you will, as a BMW enthusiast, will be upset. upset. And I was like, oh, ha, ha, yeah, okay, this guy's fucking crazy. Oh. <laughs> now you know. He was now right. You know. Man was right. I don't know where he got this information from, but dude was right, dude. Oh my god, dude. In this photo, that has a little M badge in the fender. Yep. What? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> what the you fuck? know what? I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. I don't want to talk about this car that would make me angry. Can we talk about Parth. Mercedes, which is going to make you angry more? No, no, no. Before we get to that. No, oh, dude. Can we talk about the... Can we get... Can we talk about the... 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 Parth, what do you think about the Bentley Continental GT? The newer ones, I like them. Right? Yes. It's strange. Yes. When it first came out, I was like, Meh. yeah, it's like literally like what they said in the Grand Tour in that one episode. You're like, I hate the Bentley Continental GT. I hate the Bentley Continental GT. I hate the Bentley Continental GT. And one day you wake up, oh, I love the Bentley Continental GT. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I resonated so much with that statement. Yeah. I was like, 
I'm like, me hey, too. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> but on the other hand, I always thought the Bentley Flying Spur mm. looked dumb because it just felt like they like got the GT and like chopped the back up and decided let's shove just generic sedan back on the back and oh look four door Continental GT. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Bentley like, Continental Ugh. GT Grand Coupe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But Parth, have you seen the new 2020 Bentley Flying Spur that came out? Yeah, okay, I'll look at it right now. Because I think this thing looks gorgeous. Yo, that looks nice. Guys, look this up. The angle, I love it at the most. The front three quarter. the side profile. Oh, I like the side profile. Look at the side profile. Yeah, but like the front three quarter. Yeah, side profile. (laughs) Side profile. (laughs) Ooh, that looks like a businessman's car. It looks beautiful. And then if you look at the inside, oh my god. I mean, gosh. it's a Bentley, so like... It's a Bentley, but I mean like... About that. But the initial Bentleys were like, oh, cool, it's a Volkswagen interior, more wood. But <laughs> look at this! This is clearly not a Volkswagen interior. Yeah, this is this is nice, dude. And, then, and the thing is, it's a Bentley. It's not a Rolls Royce. They have two different, very different philosophies that were kind of like muddled up when Rolls Royce bought Bentley. But now we know that Rolls Royce is all about luxury, floatiness, and whatnot. But this is a Bentley, so it's gonna it's gonna go fast. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna move. Okay, I just saw a photo of the side profile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see. Yeah. You'll see. Ooh. Oh gosh. You know what the scary thing is? Uh-huh. I kind of like was scrolling through the pictures. Yeah. And Which I'm doing just right like, now. <laughs> yeah, uh, scrolling through the pictures and just glanced at one of the the rear three quarters one, uh-huh. and I was like. Kind of reminds me of a Genesis. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh no! Fucking Genesis, dude. <clears throat> All right, let's not talk about Korean cars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Barth. Before I rudely cut you off about Mercedes, what did you want to say, dude? Uh, Mercedes is also doing some shit, and it's gonna piss you off, kind of like BMW C63, classic, German muscle. You know, that's what everyone calls it. Refined, elegant, but still kind of crazy, right? Uh huh. It's getting a hybrid four cylinder. Probably what engine does a Prius have? Does it have a four cylinder? Hybrid? Great. Fun. I don't know, but in the end, I feel like. I feel like Mercedes might be able to make it work, to be honest. Oh, but a V8 to a four cylinder <laughs> turbo? Not even turbo. Sorry, four cylinder hybrid? I don't even know if they're going to put turbos in it. It's just missing four cylinders. What? 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 what what's that going to do? I, uh, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I, I just don't like an idea of a C63 AMG having a hybrid four cylinder, dude. What the fuck? I don't know. I mean, like, we're transitioning to that period of downsizing on engines, and turboing them, and now electrifying them. Oh, this was a news from a couple weeks back. Uh-huh. Did you hear Daimler has stopped development on internal combustion engines? What? <laughs> Their their R and D for internal combustion engines were like nope, goodbye. They're focusing on developing EV drivetrains now. Daimler's Benz is not. Yes, Daimler owns Benz. Uh, well, another one bites the dust, I guess. All right, Parth. Any happy news you could end us off on? Happy news, yeah, dude. I saw the trailer. Have you seen the trailer for Ferrari V four? Yes, I have. Dude. Yes, I have. Dude. I am so glad that that's becoming a movie. Dude, seriously, dude. And my favorite part is, look at the cast. Dude. Well, we got Matt Damon. Matt. We got Christian Bale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else we got? We got Matt Damon. <laughs> we got Matt Christian Damon. Bale. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> that is going to be fantastic, dude. Yeah, because if you've ever heard of a story in car history that is worthy of i believe a hollywood production this is this one yeah i think it's the ford versus ferrari story and guys if you have not heard about the ford and ferrari you know conflict with the ford gt look it up there's plenty of people who have talked about it and it's just one fantastic story i think yeah dude it's and the fact that you know matt damon is playing carol shelby that's yeah that's that's sick <laughs> i i can't wait for this movie to come out man right all, all the gearheads are going to be like, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a car I know meet him. I know him. I know him. Seriously. <laughs> Ferrari owners and Ford owners are going to punch each other in the, in the parking lot. And people are going to show up with their Ferraris and their Ford GTs, and there's going to be a brawl in the parking lot. Like, fuck you. No, fuck you. <laughs> all right, guys. With that, let us bring you to the end of this show. 
Thank you all for listening. Uh, I just want to say uh, we're going to be changing our release schedule yeah. from Wednesday, 5.30 a.m. to Monday, 5.30 a.m. because we keep you know, running into scheduling conflicts. So that would give us more of more leeway to record so you guys aren't missing episodes. And we might be able to give you better content, you know, and then you can you yeah. know, start your week off correctly with the little dose of the curbside. Yes, exactly. But, you know, as always, thank you guys for listening to this week's episode. Um, you could find us at the curbsidepodcast.com where there is a link to all of our social media. We are Curbside Pod on Twitter. We are the Curbside Podcast on Facebook, the Curbside Podcast on Instagram. And there is also a link to our Libsyn page on the uh, on the website that gives you all of our listening links to other platforms like Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, and so on. Um, we also have a YouTube channel where I upload all the episodes to. They're just just they're just the audio, but uh, I might not be able to upload some this week because my Final Cut stopped working because I updated my computer. But once that gets once that gets better, we'll go back to uploading there. Um, as always, thank you to Kid Dope for providing us with the theme song "Fast Cars and Wild Hearts." And as always. My name is Jeff. And I'm Parth. Drive safe, and life is too short to drive boring cars. Bye-bye! Yeah,